Are franchise films dying? 2023 has been a very exciting time in the world of cinema, but this year has also led to massive failures of some of the biggest franchises that we know. So what's causing this shift in the movie industry? Is it some sort of fatigue from audiences? Or is there just a lack of creativity in these franchises? Are budgets getting bigger, but the quality is getting worse? Is 2023 the beginning of the end for franchise films? Let's take a look. So I decided to start my research by heading over to the box office. This is usually a pretty good indicator for if a film is succeeding or not. But of course, the amount of money a film is making doesn't necessarily mean the movie is any good. We'll set that point aside for now and just look at the top 15 highest grossing films of 2023 so far. And just from a quick glance, franchises seem to be dominating the box office as eight of the top 15 films are franchises. So there's no way they could be dying, right? Well, let's hold up a sec and take a closer look. Sitting at number 5 on the list, we have Fast X, the 10th Fast and the Furious film, which brought in roughly $704 million worldwide. Pretty good, but when you take into account the budget, which sits at around $340 million, things start to not look so good. As a general rule of thumb, usually you want your film to make about two and a half times your budget. So in the case of Fast X, the film would have needed to make about $850 million before the profits started to come in. Let's check out Mission Impossible 7 sitting at number eight on the list. It brought in around $563 million while battling a $291 million budget. Just like Fast X, it didn't even come close to bringing in what it needed to. What's interesting about these franchises is that they spent around 100 to 140 million more dollars than the previous installments in their franchises. Now, I'm not going to break down all of the numbers for each franchise in the top 15 of the box office currently, but I do want to take a look at one more before we assess the cause of all these failures. Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny came out on June 30th and currently sits at number 14 in the box office for this year. This one is definitely the biggest failure on the list as it brought in about $382 million against a production budget of around $300 million and then another whopping $100 million that was spent on marketing, bringing the total to around $400 million. This movie would have needed to make a billion dollars before it started to see a profit. The last Last entry in the Indiana Jones franchise, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, brought in about $790 million back in 2008, which if you take into account inflation, it would be about $1.1 billion in 2023. I guess Disney figured they would do at least that much, and since it's a beloved franchise that hasn't had a new entry in 15 years, I think they just kind of banked on fans being excited to see Indy back on the big screen but obviously they were extremely wrong. Like the majority of the franchises in the top 15 of the box office currently, out of the eight of them in the top 15, five of them completely flopped and didn't make their money back. Now, this is obviously not taking into account the money they make when these films hit streaming, physical copies, the amount of merchandise they're able to sell, and so on, but strictly looking at box office numbers, it's pretty rough. So what are the three franchises that did succeed? Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 is the fourth highest grossing film this year, John Wick Chapter 4 sits at number 12, and Creed 3 sits at number 15. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 has the biggest budget out of these three films, which is about $250 million, but it was able to bring in $845 million, which is slightly less than the $869 million that the previous film brought in, but it still performed pretty well. John Wick 4 spent $100 million, making it the most expensive John Wick movie, and Creed 3 only spent about 75 million, which is 15 million more than Creed 2. I would argue that out of these three films, the two that I have seen use their budget in a way that actually improve off the previous films. The CGI and visual presentation alone in Guardians 3 is enough for me to understand the budget of this film, let alone the fact that it has a super solid story that closes out the franchise well. Obviously, this is a Marvel film, but I think why this one still succeeded and works is because it doesn't feel like Marvel had their hands all over it. I'm personally 
personally not a big fan of Marvel movies and have been a casual viewer when it comes to Guardians, but I like these movies because they feel original and you can tell that James Gunn is at the helm here. When it comes to John Wick 4, you can definitely tell they're trying to step up all the action and improve all the fight sequences even more. It's something we see all the time with action franchises, they always try to go bigger and more epic than before. The Fast and the Furious films are a fantastic example of this. They started out as street racing movies and by the ninth film, somehow we literally ended up in space. It's never good when your film becomes the joke that people have been making about where the franchise will go next. I do worry that John Wick could suffer in similar ways if they choose to do a fifth film or go beyond that. In regards to number four, it still feels oddly fresh because the style is perfected even more. From the action choreography to the satisfying gore and beautiful cinematography, it's so well put together and you can tell the entire team behind it cares about this franchise and wants to give audiences the greatest action movie of all time. The money spent here makes sense because the quality of the film is better than the previous and it also progresses the story even further. It's not just relying on a couple big gimmicky scenes like we've seen the Fast and the Furious do by going to space, having Han come back from the dead, or hack zombie cars and so on. Now, now, don't get me wrong, I absolutely love the Fast and the Furious franchise, but they definitely seem to focus too much sometimes on these types of scenes rather than the film as a whole like John Wick 4 does. The fourth film builds off the John Wick formula by still taking risks, trying new things and new approaches, as well as opening the story up more and adding to the world, which is why it still feels fresh and exciting. So franchises can definitely still succeed in 2023, but in order to do so, they need to be original and do more than the previous entry. It's okay to rely on a formula that's worked, but you still need to continue to build on it, while not losing what made it successful in the first place. The issue with the films that didn't pop this year is not that they are a part of a franchise, but they suffer instead by being films in a franchise that choose to do nothing unique or new, and in some cases, they might even take it too far. There's definitely a very fine line to walk here. I mean, look at the reviews for Fast X, Transformers, or Indiana Jones. At best, the majority of the franchises that are sitting towards the top of the box office have average reviews. I think this year has really shown the industry that breaking away from tradition and trying things that are fun and unique, but still keep the base of what the franchise was built on, is where the real success lies, and also just finding stories that haven't been told yet. The number one film this year is Barbie, sitting at $1.4 billion worldwide, and also has above average reviews. The film is of course based on a very iconic brand, but you still can't deny the creativity in this film. It's fun and playful. The same goes for the Mario movie. Iconic characters we all know, but a story that we haven't seen on the big screen before. So it feels like something new, even though it's a pretty safe, played, straightforward film. One of the biggest successes this year is easily Sound of Freedom. Whatever your opinion is of this film, it's hard to deny that this one didn't grasp audience's attention. It sits in number 18 on the year with 191 million at the box office on a 14 and a half million dollar budget. That's impressive, and the general audiences seem to only have good things to say about this film. It's a story that hasn't been told yet, and it's on a topic that a lot of people seem to care about, which is why I think it's succeeded. One of the big factors that have led to success for these films is that people value their time and money when it comes to going to the theaters these days. If a movie doesn't look worth it, or it looks like something they've already seen, then audiences are gonna stay home and maybe catch it when it hits streaming. The reason theaters were packed for Barbie and Oppenheimer is because it felt like an event you didn't wanna miss out on. It was two original movies in an oversaturated market. The buzz and marketing around these films was great, whereas the failed franchise movies of this year tried to rely on, hey, you know us, so you should come and give us your money. And I just don't think that formula works for most moviegoers these days. The reality is, I don't think franchise films are dying, but I do think they're gonna have to work a lot harder than they used to in order to succeed. They'll need to be more creative, willing to take risks, and tell stories that are new and exciting while using the previous entries as a baseline to build off of. If a film looks like another streamlined project that just has hundreds of millions of dollars poured into it, with no passion and no love for the art form or for the previous films in the franchise, then I think these films will most likely fail. Franchises are at their best when you give the audience a new addition that's exciting and elevates the previous stories told. It's not easy to be consistent with every installment, but 
but all the greatest franchises at least gave it a shot every single time. Thank you so much for watching. I would love to hear your thoughts on the future of franchises and what your favorite ones are. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to drop a like and feel free to subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.